Okay, this lesson is an evaluation of Dr. John Penn's, um, well, divine ratios uh, all the way back to that uh, that speaks of um, ratios that we see in nature. We notice the uh, design and signature of creation in fruits, vegetation that corresponds uh, to physiology and anatomy of man. We even have certain uh, vegetation that corresponds to parts of our bodies for our health. Uh, people laugh about carrots, good for your eyes, not knowing the correlation, the signature in the carrot or why kidney beans are called kidney beans. So people really don't look for design where design is not presupposed and understood. But when you're taught about it and you look for it as under guided research by Dr. John Penn, formulas, equations, and as John Sanford, Sanford of Cornell University uh, wrote about genetic entropy, also someone else, I don't know their name, but he referenced their work in his book, Genetic Entropy, where someone had noticed there must be a sophisticated mathematical model in the Bible for decay rates of thousand year lifespan of the Old Testament and now uh, we're looking at a hundred year lifespan, uh, not more than 120. And the exception is proof when someone breaks the century mark, it's all over our social media today. And I share those posts as often as I can. And when someone begins to go further into and beyond the century mark, we really start asking to what would we attribute that. But decay rate, that's taught in the Bible, Psalm 90, 90% 90 of the lifespan of 100% of mankind was removed when Adam, before he had been cast out of the garden, that biosphere, if you will, that idyllic life that he had and knew that would not have ended, he was cast out. He found himself with a thousand year span of time, a thousand year day, which day and time are from the same word in the Bible. And no man lived outside or beyond that. 969 Methuselah lived. That was the oldest or most advanced consumption of that thousand year day. And Adam, 930 years. So just we'll slow down and look at uh, Euler's number, that number E, which the number E and the factors we use in the divine ratio aren't equivalent. But it's striking how similar uh, that number E is, and I noticed it and noticed how familiar it was and very struck by it. So let's share together our time in studying the Bible and the numbers in the Bible as seriously as we do words in the Bible. So just remembering that we have uh, information. So as Dr. Penn taught us in hermeneutics to gather all of the information about a text or a topic, for example, and then we were taught how to analyze that, contextualize it, and then take a systematic approach. So if we look at our numbers, we're, we're asked today that, which we've covered uh, ad nauseum, if you will, exhausted it, that false dichotomy, either thousands or billions, it's a false dichotomy, because there is a ratio between the two disparate uh, numbers between thousands and billions, there's a ratio and it's in the Bible. And for example, one day, one day is like uh, approximately in arithmetic, thousand years. And it's fascinating to see how that fits between the two disparate assertions of thousands and billions. We also have 1,000 years is like or approximately one day. Now when we rewrite this, it's like a ratio and or when we have both in the Bible, 1,000 to one day, we remember something that was so fundamental in our elementary algebra. Uh, for example, uh, 20 divided by four equals five, and 20 divided by five equals four. 
Well, you notice if you multiply four times five, that equals 20. And that is, there's an inverse relationship between multiplication and division. So that's, that's just, th that's how, we don't even really need a calculator. Matter of fact, uh, I have my calculator here, my TI-84, and my error in one video I did where I had uh, D equals, open parentheses, one minus R, close parentheses, to the nth power. I was actually working on the formula A equals, open parentheses, one plus R, close parentheses, to the nth power, where R equals one over N, and I was doing that and demonstrating how Euler's number 2.71828, on and on and on, the larger the number you input for the value of n. But anyway, it was noticed and the feedback was very appreciated. So I'm slowing down and just walking back through this. So uh, Jesus said there's 12 hours in a day. Let me make myself a line here. There's 12 hours in a day. And then of course the assertion of 6,000 250 years and times volume and a physics book uh, given to me by Dr. John Penn. Oh my, it, it, uh, it's really amazing uh, what it provokes you to think and how it helps. I certainly understand him better knowing his uh, hermeneutics, the science of interpretation and then noticing the hard science in his education as a professional and then his aptitude to develop a holistic hermeneutic approach that was, is really thought-provoking. So if you don't mind being provoked to thought, it's fascinating to study it. So being reminded then, so if we have 6,250 years at a 12-hour day, then we have 12 hours night, 12 hours night. Well, now you remember in Exodus, I remind you only if this is the first video you've seen about this, you can go to other videos we have about the Bible doctrine of time, the divine ratio, on and on. And then we have under the books tab at IamCorne.org, there's a book, the Bible doctrine of time and introduction. And then there's several following, uh, pub publications following that much more developed. You can go to BaptistLamp.org, go to Lamp Theological Institute, and all those are there PDF for you to read. So if we have 12 hours a day and 12 hour nights, but in Exodus it says man worked six days and rested on the seventh, that's 12 hour days. So being just taking the Bible literally for the sake of this conversation and demonstration. So, and using Bible data for a cosmogony that would not be like anything we've heard or um, seen echo out there apart from Bible data. So how could we construct this using uh, what we know about the Bible and ratios and the re inverse relationship and what we now know about time and its volume. So let's just say we doubled that and that's where we get the 12,500. And if we multiply that times our 360 day year that gives us 4.5 million days. And remember in hermeneutics, point number four in your holistic hermeneutics textbook, that you can review that also on the PDF format under the books tab at both, well at iamcorne.org and then under Lamp Theological Institute, there's a tab there. You can find that uh, holistic, historical holistic hermeneutics textbook, which is a, is a, is Brother uh, Dr. John Penn's uh, holistic hermeneutic in a abridged expression of it, it can certainly be expanded through application. But point number four was to define your terms. So right now we're looking at a recent earth creation and now we're looking at that ratio. So we have the day, one day, we have our day column if you will if we set it up one day to a thousand years. So there, there's our days. So let's bring our 4.5 million here. There's our million days. Now let's multiply that by 1,000 years. 
and that equals 4.5 billion years. But now that's an amount. That amount, that is referring to the, uh, for example, in uh, physics and um, the observations of uh, matter, dark matter has been observed to represent two-thirds of all matter and dark energy has now been measured and observed. So what is that? And that's the effects of death that followed sin. Sin entered into the world. So we're looking at sin as something, although often only discussed in metaphysical terms, the consequences seem to have material, uh, or seem to be empir empirically observable. We can see something as it's decayed. We can see it accumulate. So we have an amount here of death and or the effects of sin. So I'll just call it that. And we'll just do EO, the effects of sin. So that's striking for creationists as we want to express the severity of sin. But now going back to reverse this, that's referring to the earth. So you can see how, let's say Dr. Al Mohler, who spoke several years, well, a few years ago at a conference trying to explain why the earth appears so old and he was asserting from his intuition of reading the Bible that it, it should be something we would consider a reflection of the severity of the curse of sin. Okay, so he would call this the, but this is a quantified measure. Remember Dr. Fian's science approach, that is science being the Latin word for gnosis, the Greek word for knowledge, he, he really believes we can study creation from the Bible. He doesn't have to look up into the sky as he likes to remind us the Bible's sufficient. He doesn't have to go dig in the ground. Uh, so if we then look to see, well, the earth then, when people assert 4.5 billion years, we're defining our term. One refers to uh, the time ago in which a, an event, a creation event occurred and then the other refers to the accrued amount of the effects of sin. So let's now go this way, for example, this direction, and let's take our 4.5, and that's this billion years, and then let's change the thousand years. We just multiply by that by to days, but what's a thousand days? Well, now that, if you divide 360, this 360 day, year, 360 days of a, of a year into 1,000 days, you'll get this number 2 point, I think 7 repeats like 10 times, so I'll just write that out 10 times, there we go, and then there's an 8 there, something like that, so you don't need a calculator, but you know, you, we know that 360 is more than 330. And we know that a thousand, three thirty-three is a third. So we, if we know if three times three thirty-three brings us to nine ninety-nine, even in our head we know that. Especially if we've ever watched baseball and we hear that someone's batting a thousand, which we we'll never see anyone do that. So we know how to talk in those terms. We know how to say this batter bats a batting two hundred or whatever that is. So we know how to speak in those terms. But notice that number there, and that, that's what, that's, that's all that, I, it reminded me of another number uh, when we talk about amounts and how they can compound. Well, here we have 4.5 times 2.777, well, that equals, let's just go equals here, 12.5, that's not acceptable, that, that's illegible, but I'll try to repair that. That's a 5, 12.5, because I write better than that. 12.5 billion. Now that would be the amount of the effects of sin in the entire universe. So when you hear people talk about the age of the universe, what is age? What To what does that word refer? And remember number four in our hermene historical holistic hermeneutic approach, define your terms. Well, even scientists, I've heard Neil deGrasse Tyson, the very famous, brilliant, intelligent physicist, talk about young Earth and how he couldn't take that seriously. 
I've heard Dr. William Lane Craig, unsurpassed in philosophy, apologetics, and theology, talk about accepting the 4.5 billion years, and a lot of seminaries have appropriated his reintroduction of Molinism, developed by a priest named Molina. And it seems to be the middle ground between the tensions of Arminianism and Calvinism. Dr. William Lane Craig's perhaps unsurpassed in his apologetics, his aptitude for giving rationale and the critical thinking. But between him, a, an, out, a, an over, a overt Christian a activist on behalf of Christ, an ambassador of Christ in apologetics, philosophy, and theology, and Neil deGrasse Tyson, who I don't think technically he's an atheist. I just don't think he's seen data that would support the assertions of a lot of people. So given a rationale for your faith, would be much more demanded, that is the, the critical level of the rationale for someone who could think as critically as Neil deGrasse Tyson. But now I'm not saying he has that right to impose that expectation to meet his threshold of evidential criteria upon God. And I don't say that if he hadn't bothered, he couldn't find things like this for himself, but not to bother and then for it not to be noticed by someone like William Lane Craig or to see it being ignored by Neil deGrasse Tyson, it, it's really a, it's a staggering thought to think that we can just, with this third grade elementary level of mathematics, which is the challenge Dr. Penn always uh, gave us as students, if you can't explain it simply enough, it's because you don't understand it well enough. And to know that our Bible uh, is often the English Bible, for example, uh, the readability might be more difficult than the level of difficulty that it's often, it's often said that it's a fifth grade reading level or fourth grade. It's just readability is different, but I'm not here to talk about that. But to know that our text was written for commoners so that we could know and understand the Bible and then to know that words are being used like age uh, without definition. We have numbers in the Bible. We have decay rates that aren't actually being uh, observed and all the data collected. So here we are without a calculator, and we can do this. So this is just do it in our head. And why I wrote that out, and well, I left off the number 10 sevens. So here's, there's four, seven, 10 sevens, and an eight, and that's where I'm stopping. But what I, why I brought up Euler's number is because, for example, if we're over here, we're looking at an amount, for example, and we're going to one plus, because last time I'd written the other formula and put the negative, and was doing my positive work. And here's R, and that's to the N. Now R, let me just side note this, R equals one over N. But now let's watch this. So you just take A equals one plus, and then let's write one over, and let's take his number here, let's take 12,500 times 360. Let's just take that on out, that 360. And um, let's go ahead and multiply that by times 1,000. 1,000. And say that's times, since that's days, 24 hours times 60. Minutes. So it, it doesn't matter how big that number is, you see. So that's our n in this 1 over n. So let's then just put that number up there, this entire number, whatever that equals. And you can take a calculator if you'd like. But what you'll get, though, is it will come out to this. The answer will always, the larger the number that is. And uh, here, draw an arrow, e, and that's 2 point, hmm, seven one eight. Two eight, yeah. I, I try to remember just the parts that are the core of it to prove it. Now all this is is that this number here is very familiar to me when I was evaluating this, and it's more familiar to Dr. Penn because he's the one with the science background, and I'm suggesting that without a calculator, we can see how. Uh, let's say how it compounds. Speaking of interest, people want to know about if they had $500 or whatever and how that would compound. Well, now that's amazing because the effects of sin multiply. 
and they multiply according to what we see in the Bible to where if science were to notice the effects of sin, which they don't, and if religionists knew the difference, but they don't, then we could have what the Bible says for all of us to appreciate, and that's why we published this. But the relationship between uh, Dr. Penn's factor here, which is nothing more than 1,000, uh, I'll just write it out, divided by 360, and that's the number of days in a year, and that's 1,000 days, and that was to determine the could we quantify the effects of sin? But now look how close his numbers are to what people through high technology, high levels of technology, uh, Hubble telescopes, uh, I don't know all the ways uh, it's measured. I know we have a scientist in our church, Dr. Bob White, and he talks about uh, more advanced methodologies. But I would, uh, I would just like to say that it was very striking when you see things like this, notice the similarities. So here's, I'll just write this out. Here's, um, um, I'll just write it. John Penn E. Now his middle name starts with an E, isn't that interesting? So here's John Penn's E, that, that just that factor of multiplying there uh, is just 1,000 divided by 360, and that equals 2.7777777778. And then Euler's E, <laughs> Euler's E equals 2.71828. Now what was interesting, this one talks about compound, how something, and we apply it, how something compounds. I remember as a young uh, young man in, in a church service, someone was singing about sin takes you farther than you ever want to go, and then uh, preachers would preach about sin's consequences are greater than the small actions. And an older gentleman that I was honored to point to Christ because his uh, perplexity, he was in a flummox in the, from Genesis, and he wanted to know why such a big deal, a consequence was so severe from such a small act, small sin act of Adam, and he was being honest in, in speaking with me, and he could speak to me. I was pastoring him. Uh, his wife had been here for years, and I had begun to uh, call and visit the home and get, was able to know him and befriend him for Christ and lead him exactly the direction he should go. But very striking was uh, his question was, something so small as that one act of disobedience by Adam led to such a great consequence. Now, I didn't have this then, but I began to uh, refer back to messages I'd heard about sin and how sin brings forth death and how upon sin, I mean upon death we all sin, and how life now is, is so brief and the pain and the suffering in this world is, and the consequences of sin but when I was able to share that and reflect back on what I had heard and always been told, it was quite encouraging to be able to take this and measure this. But what I noticed was that I'd, I'd seen and knew those of us who had to sit through uh, mathematics. I only went to try to learn and understand uh, how it communicates and what it says. I, I've never studied beyond the, uh, a second year a sophomore level of mathematics so I've never gone on and pursued that so when you see my work at such a low base level um, that's the only level I can work at and Dr. Penn's thinking being so high gives direction and then the challenge was to keep it uh, well it's what I call um, simply scandalous or the scandal of simplicity it, it's so doable and I can see and understand now like Tyndale wanted the plowboy to know more than what religious professionals might have held close to their chest and maybe not have wanted uh, to dispense to the commoners and I can understand now why the Bereans would search the scriptures to see if things they had heard were so but it certainly becomes encouraging when you want to notice. 
but there's really no way there's no uh there's nothing equal about euler's number it's just it's application and compounding interest and and the use of how big numbers you can just put larger and larger numbers and you'll still come to this conclusion showing this and then how it compounds more and more quickly than just exponential well if you think about what we've learned here in the bible and how we can read this and understand that this disparity between thousands or billions is first we didn't define the thousands referring to time and we didn't define the billions as the amount of effects of sin however we want to express that metaphysically that then affected material matter and measure that so it's quite a it's quite a testament it is encouraging i'm thankful for feedback when i had the wrong formula on the board and was waxing eloquent but what i like about both these is you don't need a calculator i mean you can just remember this that's just five numbers and in cognitive load theory five is about as far as we can go so and here this one i just remembered the sevens there were ten of those so that's just two fives but I didn't remember to shut off my phone, so you have a blessed day.